to facilitate this and making it all happen. This is what happens in America when people stand up for what's right and they have the inspiration to right a wrong. I have been looking at ACORN for four to five years. I introduced my first amendment to unfund ACORN, at least tracking back through our records in 2007. I uh, drafted an amendment then, and uh, there was no traction to be had. We couldn't get attention, even though, as we watched this unfold, the transgressions of ACORN accumulated month by month and year by year. And I would just take you back to the shakedown of lenders that precipitated some of the financial meltdown and the toxic, toxic mortgages. Think in terms of ACORN employees bragging about going into a lender's office and pushing his desk off against the wall and surrounding the lender and hollering and shouting and intimidating them and, and jamming the doorways of the lender's building so they can't do business until they pay off and get the shakedown paid away. And then having ACORN come back later on and say, but now you need to make bad loans in bad neighborhoods and we'll tell you which neighborhoods. Community Reinvestment Act was about ending redlining, drawing red lines around districts it's because lenders were areas that lenders were not loaning into. And it became ACORN redlining saying to lenders, you shall loan here and we'll tell you who and then we'll broker those loans. This went on, that's part of it. We've seen the over 400,000 fraudulent voter registration forms, false or fraudulent voter registration forms that ACORN has admitted to in the previous election cycle in swing <coughs> states. We've seen ACORN operate as a partisan get out the vote machine for Democrats with our U.S. tax dollars. Now they can argue their different, their, their different corporate configurations. 361 affiliates of ACORN have been identified in the report that was produced and thanks to Congressman Darrell Issa, a ranking member of government reform. On July, July 23rd of this year, that report came out. That's when Chairman of the Judiciary Committee, John Conyers, that night in the Congressional Record, agreed to read the report and respond to that. And we've been carrying on this dialogue about congressional investigations of ACORN ever since. It is a very slow process to try to get an affirmative response from the Chairman of the Judiciary Committee, who should be outraged by what we have seen. But that's, the, that's in the election <coughs> corruption component of this. It's not just fraudulent registration forms, false or fraudulent registration forms that they've admitted to. They're under investigation. Now we've listed 19 states in another letter to Chairman Conyers asking for investigations of ACORN and hearings. Uh, those 19 states, there are approximately 70 convictions of ACORN employees. Now, and ACORN itself as an entity is under indictment in the state of Nevada for violation of their election laws. And uh, there are 11 individuals that have been warrants uh, that have uh, been served in Florida for violations of their voter registration laws down there. And if that's not enough, uh, people will say from ACORN, well, it was only fraudulent forms. Truthfully, what we really think is that there were no, they, they believe that there were no fraudulent votes. Um, they don't think that in Troy, New York, whether they're under investigation there for fraudulent votes. That's the election component of this. It goes on and on and on. ACORN is a corrupt criminal enterprise. That's the conclusion of the July 23rd report. But we couldn't crack into that without Hannah and without James because they had the insight to go inside those buildings and present themselves as, I'll just say, a pimp and a prostitute. And we got to look inside ACORN to see the character and the culture behind those doors in five cities. And now America is outraged, and now Congress has voted in the House and the Senate to unfund ACORN, even though people like Barney Frank have worked for years to open up authorization that would set ACORN up to tap into funds as large as $8.5 billion, and temporarily suspended by a, by a, uh, a, a continuing uh, resolution, by opening up the door again November 1st if Congress doesn't act. We need to act as a Congress. We need to open up investigations in the Judiciary Committee and Government Reform and Ways and Means and the Appropriations Committee and also in Financial Services. You'll recognize some of the chairs of those committees. Uh, they are the most likely to be defenders of ACORN. The Department of Justice needs to investigate. And if they're going to be an actual Department of Justice, there's no way that they can say that this ACORN investigation shouldn't be opened up completely in cooperation with the IRS. There's not enough that we can do, but we should, this Congress needs to open up on all fronts, and we need to be voting to shut down the funding of ACORN, and we need to honor the work that's been done and the courageous stance that's been taken by James and by Hannah, and I'm here to say thank you to them 
and I appreciate your attention in the press to this matter because without you, uh, this, this subject goes away and the American people lose. <coughs>